I always read stories about skinwalkers. Now I've killed one. I remember back when I was a high school kid reading creepypasta stories. The skinwalker ones always stuck out to me. You know the ones where the people are in some remote location. And then one of them disappears for a bit and comes back, different. And then starts buying like a goat, and they run away, blah blah blah. And they're all similar, but I found the idea so interesting. Creepy goat bees that pretend to be human. Sign me up. My only problem with the stories are how helpless the people always were. Sometimes the people would fire a shot and all it would do is slow down the creature. Fair. But first, they would take too long to figure out something is up. Or they would just try to run and hide. And that never worked out. I'll admit it, skinwalkers are damn scary. I know now from experience. But I also know the only way to beat one is to fight it. I do have something to admit. I was a serious addict at a time. Not to one particular thing. I just didn't want to be in my own skin. I wouldn't say that I was homeless, more like a nomad. I had some money in the bank and a car, but not much else. Well, except for the copious amounts of drugs. I'm about two years sober now, but this story is from five years ago. Even though I fought a freaking monster, I didn't get clean. The scariest monsters are the ones inside of us. But skinwalkers are pretty freaking scary too. Here's my recount to the best of my memory. It was raining in Detroit. I had been driving back from Canada after getting some exquisite MXE. Cheap and well made. Thanks Canada. I figured since it was pouring and getting dark. I would find an old abandoned house to sleep in. I drove down a few of the roads in the outskirts of the city, dilapidated houses on both sides of me. Many of them had water pouring through their broken windows. Some of them were partially caved in, where neglect had taken its toll. One was even on fire. Detroit really had become run down. My guess was some of the water had gotten into some electrical work. I could hear sirens in the distance. Good sign though, since that meant electricity was flowing down the block. I drove a bit more until I saw the house that fit my three criteria. It wasn't leaking, it wasn't occupied, and it wasn't on fire. It was a pretty nice house. One floor but small and comfortable. Redwood paneling on the outside, white boarded windows, and even a stone chimney. I went around back through the overgrown yard, picked the miraculously unbroken door, and got out of the rain. I checked the place out, and it was like I had walked into heaven. The bedroom had a mattress, the sink wasn't gross, and it had running water, and there was an electric stove that worked. Today was my lucky day. I unpacked some of my things, threw my sleeping bag on the mattress and set some water to boil while charging my laptop. See, I told you I wasn't homeless. I liked a bit of comfort in my life. I had my cooler with milk and butter too, so my mac and cheese was damn delicious. And finally, I had my time to get high. It should be noted, I never hallucinated. Even after taking tons of acid and shrooms, I only had the color effects and swirling. Distortion, but not projection. So imagine my confusion when, sitting in the warm light I had on in a sturdy chair, high out of my mind, I heard a ba sound outside. I wasn't scared, but since when were there goats in Detroit? Weird. But I was occupied, so I got back to watching YouTube on my phone. Come morning time, I woke up to find that it was still raining. Great. I was honestly enjoying my stay in a somewhat furnished house, so I pulled out my laptop and I got to some browsing. 
Of course, I helped myself to ingest in a bit more MXE, plus a bowl or two, and I was quite content. And then I heard a knock on the door. Shit. Weed always made me paranoid. And while it was slightly negated by the MXE, being in a house I had technically broken into put me on edge. I hoped to God it wasn't the police. But I answered the door nonetheless. There stood a man, soaking wet, clearly high. I thought, hey, unless this guy shanks me, we could be best buddies. He wasn't intimidating, a bit shorter than me and scrawny, with unmatched shoes a size too big and uncut scraggly hair. Hey boss, help a guy get out of the cold and rain for a bit. I said sure. Who was I to say no? It wasn't my house. And we exchanged some pleasantries as he came in. I don't think he was in any state of mind to determine that the house had clearly been abandoned. But even if he was, he didn't say anything. He just sat down in a chair and rode whatever wave he was on. I continued my own browsing, taking a bit more MXC out of sight from him and then offering him to smoke. He happily obliged. I figured another drug you wouldn't care to steal some guy's weed, but a white powder. Even I would steal that if I saw it. A few hours passed and the rain let up. He thanked me, got up and laughed. Another human interaction with no trouble. A win in my book. Since it was around 5, I made myself a cup of ramen and continued on with my never-ending journey of dosing my self-loathing with chemicals. I threw down a bottle of cheaply acquired Robitussin to add to my high, and I waited for it to hit. Once the hour of waiting was up, I felt the new sensations flowing through my veins, and I laid down to get through a bit of nausea. As I was lying there, something passed through my peripheral vision outside. It almost looked like a goat. I wasn't going to be getting up unless the bed under me was on fire. And so I stopped caring. And then came the ba again. My mind, neurons now shooting too quickly in succession to recognize any pattern, went right to the stories of skinwalkers. I vividly remembered everything, and a part of me, a small part, wished I was really dealing with one. I fantasized about being in the woods, seeing a friend come back as something wrong. I went through the possibilities, how I would handle it. Plans and plans ran through my brain, setting wild booby traps, shooting it with a machine gun, and many more that I don't remember. Eventually, I fell asleep. The next day I felt like absolute garbage. My stomach couldn't handle an entire bottle of cough syrup like it used to. Now I know that I was getting stomach ulcers, but I was still in the midst of my addiction then so I didn't really care. I drank some milk and I took an Alka-Seltzer, popped a few Xanax and I passed out for the next 16 hours. I woke up to a loud knocking on the door. I tumbled out of bed, headed to the door and then noted, It's pitch black outside, raining again and I don't actually live here. Who the hell could that be? I got to the door and I tried looking through the people, but I couldn't see a thing. And then I heard the knocking again, loud and fast like it was an emergency. I popped back to where my bag was, grabbed my admittedly crummy old gun, and I pocketed it. And then I opened the door. There stood the man from the other day, drenched again, looking down at the ground. I asked him if he was okay, and he slowly turned his head up. He locked eyes with me and a shiver went down my spine. Something was different. Hey boss, help a guy out of this cold and rain for a bit. He said as he did the first time. But the slur of his words was gone and his voice had this strange and nasal sound to it. Against my better judgment, I let him in. He walked rigidly now, much less talkative. He sat down where I offered and just 
stared at me like I was something novel, like I was something different. I packed and lit up a bowl since he was seriously making me uncomfortable, and then I offered it to him. He stared at me like I had two heads, and then took it and inhaled it, mimicking me. That was a bad idea. I quickly noticed a few things. He was now coughing so hard, it looked like his face was about to come loose. And then it did. Like a kid wearing a Halloween mask that slid to one side. His pupils turned into rectangles, and his hands had ripped open, peeling back like a banana peel, revealing claws. I had just gotten a skinwalker high. I stared at him, at it, dumbfounded for a second, before the primal part of me took over. I don't know how I pulled it off, but my brain fired the emergency switch, ran to the bedroom, grabbed my bag with everything in it, crushed up an Adderall, snorted it, refocused and ran back to the entry. I saw the goat or the skinwalker, freaking the hell out and buying. Bone protrusions had cracked up through his spine. His clothes had almost ripped entirely off. The beast's chest now a hulking mass of muscle pulsating with anger, growing larger by the second. I ran past and I booked it to my car. I threw my crap in the car and my brain was on ultra speed. Would driving work? No, those things always catch up in the stories. Gun. Not my piece of crap. A fire? A fire would work. I grab my spare can of gas from my car, there's cheap gas in Canada, stock up while you can, and I booked it back. I hope to god the thing hadn't regained its senses. When I entered the door, I realized that it had and it was pissed. The now hooved monstrosity charged straight at me, swiping with its claws. It grazed my side, sending searing pain through my synopsis. I barely managed to hold on to the gas can and I tumbled into the bedroom, directly onto the bed. I was apparently bleeding more than the pain was telling me, because I slipped in a bit of a puddle of my own blood, trying to flee to the opposite side of the bed, away from the monster, now barreling through the doorway. I flipped the mattress with my sleeping bag up, and the thing started shredding it. It was making unholy screams now, like an elephant was giving birth to a goat that was being mauled by a lion. I managed to pour the gas onto the mattress with one hand, bracing the mattress between myself and the certain death right behind it. The goat beast didn't seem to care, getting covered in gasoline, mattress material, and sleeping bag foam. I let back on the mattress a little, just enough for it to push forward hard, and then I pushed back harder, so hard that I broke my wrist, so hard that I sprained to both of my ankles. I didn't expect the life or death Hulk strength, and I flinched for only a second, but I used that second of fear and drug induced time dilation to smash through the window behind me. Without even thinking, I flicked open my lighter and I threw it in the window. Within a second, the room was up in flames. After I ran to the curb, I looked back inside. What I saw in the window was my proudest moment. The monster was engulfed in flames. Not only had the gasoline caught, but the foam and other material had stuck to it, and it was rapidly searing off skin and muscle. The thing was screaming. It was dying. It was the most metal thing I had ever seen. I took a sigh of relief and then noticed a cool feeling on my leg. I looked down to find an absurd pool of blood under me. The pain hit and I passed out. I woke up in the hospital. Apparently firefighters had found me. I told the police a semi lie about being a squatter and having somebody come at me with a knife. And when I was out, they must have started the fire. I was eventually discharged. Found my way back to the house and got in my car. And then I got the hell out of Detroit. So... That's how I killed a skinwalker, or a goat man, or whatever you want to call that thing. Yeah, I almost died, but I didn't. 
Is there a lesson from this? Yes, and here it is because I like to share my opinions. Monsters have to hide in the dark because they're afraid of us. Maybe not individually, but they must have seen what we're able to accomplish as a group. We would turn land bare for resources, create weapons that could annihilate all life, and shoot ourselves in metal tubes into space. We're smart and vicious, and no matter how good any beast gets at murdering, humans have mastered the art. I don't know how to end this triumphant speech, so I'm just going to stop writing now. Okay, now. Alright, maybe one more sentence. Wait, I almost forgot the classic. Frickin' skinwalkers. Perfect.